Hello everyone! In this video, we'll talk about how to prepare and ready your body so that you can handle the manifestation coming in and how to activate and manipulate the massive amount of energy in your body to make that manifestation happen. Are you ready? Let's begin! A problem that many people face when trying to manifest is that they simply may not be ready to receive it. This can manifest in a number of different ways, like limiting beliefs that cause a self-sabotaging effect, where the manifestation may come and slip away just as fast. Like, let's say you wanted to manifest the love of your life, but when that person comes, you become in denial that it's really happening. Maybe the shadow of your attachment style comes out and pushes the person away. Or the change can be so massive that your mind and your body are simply unable to handle it. For example, what if you manifest and win a million dollars from the lottery? If you have a fear of having and losing money, then you might end up spending it like so many other lottery winners do, spending it all away. In the first part of the series, we address shadow work so that we can address these self-limiting aspects of ourselves. But with that, we also need to prepare our bodies to handle these manifestations as well. First, we need to unblock. To review, first we need to release energy blockages within the body in the major and minor chakras so that the flow of energy can move freely. And we can do this in a variety of ways such as yoga, breath work, meditation, and other somatic practices. Now to transmute our energy and turn it into power for our manifestations, this is what you can do. First, we need to improve our flexibility, grow our strength, and find balance within ourselves. But make sure you stay tuned until the end so that you can learn the techniques so that you can harness energy from both the earth and universal consciousness. So one, flexibility. Flexibility in your body will translate to flexibility in your life. When you are flexible, you're able to adapt to change more quickly and effectively. So think about what happens when you have massive change happening in your life. How much more difficult and how much more challenging it is when you are inflexible when you are rigid, when you are unable to adapt to change. Like a rigid board, there will be stillness rather than forward progression and a possibility of breaking, snapping under the pressure. On the other hand, when you're agile, quickly adapting to change happening around you, you get into the flow of things. You're able to flow and move with the change, elevating to a new state of being. You won't experience as much difficulty, as much pain. Think about if you manifested suddenly moving to a new country. There's an upheaval that takes place. Life as you know it quickly changes. Your routine, your environment, your social circle, your home. That could be a lot, especially all at once. Or consider starting a new job in a completely new career path. You have to adapt rather than being stuck in your old habits, your old ways. Simply put, we need to be okay with change, okay with the struggles that come with adapting. That all comes from flexibility. Strength. <laughs> we need power in order to handle what we are calling in. If we need flexibility to deal with change gracefully, we need power to hold ourselves up, to bring in and hold the manifestation without crumbling. In other words, we need power to move mountains and we need the strength to make sure we're not crushed by the mountain as well. The more massive the manifestation, the more power and strength we need. What if you're manifesting a business? something where you're responsible for paying for the livelihood of your employees. Maybe you need an office space or a whole plot of land. That's big. That's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of responsibility. To prevent being crushed by the increased pressure, your body or your vessel needs to be strong. You need to be strong in order to shoulder the responsibility that that manifestation holds. 
you need power to not only draw it in, but to also maintain and sustain it for a time to come. You need to be strong to prevent your own fall, to prevent failure, to prevent being crushed by the massiveness that you are calling in. Balance. When we are in balance, we're able to hold our posture without, without falling over. Mentally, this applies as well. When we are mentally balanced, we are present. We're able to make sense of what's going on around us without falling over into one extreme or the other. For example, falling into narcissism, self-centeredness, or self-deprecation and egoism. Becoming a stoic in a way. Balance calls on us to observe how we are engaged in our lives. Where are we putting our focus and our energy? Are we able to pick ourselves back up when we're hit with unexpected waves from life? Can you maintain your inner peace when you face challenges? And balance also comes across with how we treat ourselves. Do you have work-life balance? Is there balance in your relationships? How's your health? Are you fulfilled? Consider a time when your life felt like it wasn't in balance. Perhaps you were working while going to school full time. Maybe you had a lot going on with your family, but still had to work to survive. Reflect on how you felt during those moments. When life is out of balance, there's chaos. But also clarity can come in this space. Clarity of what you really want in life. When we are in balance, we are at peace. We are engaged. We are at a place where our true selves can shine. And don't we want to be our true authentic selves while we manifest the life that we want to live? Now you may be wondering, how do you put these things into practice and build these aspects in your life? Well, we start with the body. First, we work on the body to then have an impact on our mind and our spirit. So that means physically, we're going to work on flexibility, our strength, and balance. Now we can do stretches for flexibility, do some weightlift training to build our strength, and perhaps do some BOSU ball exercises for balance. But a practice that I recommend to work on all three things, plus unblock your energy channels, is... Yoga! Did you see that coming? This is why yoga is such an amazing practice and so much more than a workout. It's an amazing way for us to heal traumas and stored blockages in our bodies and a way for us to uplift ourselves and prepare us to live life fully in the way that we want to. And of course, the practice, the asana practice, helps us with our mobility and flexibility, but we also work on strength as we learn how to properly engage our muscles. Then there are balancing postures that work on both the left and right side and challenges our mental fortitude. And so this practice will follow us off the mat and translate into personal power in our lives and for our manifestations. So if you didn't have a reason to practice yoga before, I hope this encourages you to get on your mat. Now let's talk about harnessing energy for your manifestations. You're unblocked, energy is flowing, and now your body is ready to handle the massive manifestations that you want to bring in. Now what? We talked a little bit about different manifestation techniques in part two, but in order for them to work, we need to put energy into them. To do this, you slightly need to understand the chakra system. Basically, there are seven major chakras. The lower third triangle consists of your muladhara or root chakra, swadhisthana or sacral chakra, and the manipura or solar plexus chakra. These three encompass your physical reality. And in particular, your solar plexus chakra is important here. You know the saying that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Think of your solar plexus as the powerhouse of your body. 
Without getting into too much detail, this is a exchange place for the subtle energies that are in your body, also known as the different pranas or vayus. These travel in different directions and have different functions, but they meet together here, like a superhighway. The solar plexus also acts like a magnet, attracting energy from other sources like the earth, from the cosmos, universal energy and then transmutes it to make it usable for the human body. So this area is important for us to generate and control energy. Let's try the first practice together. First, I want you to close your eyes and gently rest your hands by your side. If you're seated, you can rest your hands just on top of your knees or your thighs. Palms are face up. Begin by bringing awareness to your breath. Inhaling, feeling your belly expand. And exhale, bring your navel in towards the spine. Long, deep breathing. Take a few moments just to tune into your breath. Inhaling and exhaling, slowing down the breath. Next, I want you to bring your energy here into your solar plexus. As you inhale, Feel your energy expand here at the center of your belly. You can see it as a ball of energy. The color is golden or yellow. To bring the energy here, slightly squeeze at your abdomen, like you're flexing your abs, getting ready to get punched in the gut. See this ball of energy get larger as you inhale and maintaining its size as you exhale. And if you're having trouble holding this energy here, simply bring your left palm down below your navel, so below your belly button, palm is face up, right arm is above it, to about chest level, so both palms are facing towards each other. Hold your hands here as if you are holding the ball in between your hands. Breathing in, bring your energy in towards your navel center and exhale and do this for a couple more breaths so that you can practice maintaining your energy here at your solar plexus maintaining control maintaining your focus breathe in and breathe out Now let's move this energy into our arm. If you are here with your arms towards your abdomen, very, very slowly so that you don't disturb the energy, move your hands to rest on top of your knees or your thighs, rested by your side. Still focusing on your energy at your abdomen, begin to draw the energy up your body towards the heart. Then move the energy down your arms all the way through to your fingertips. Physically, hold tension in your arms, squeezing the muscles here. Good. Now keep focusing your energy in your arms by squeezing your muscles. Continue as you inhale and you exhale. Keep your focus. A couple more breaths. And now see if you can push the energy out through your fingertips and out into the world. You can do this by tensing at the fingertips, tensing your hands. Keep flexing your arms, pushing your muscles as you do so. Take a deep inhale breath and exhale, relax, release, stop pushing your energy out, relax your arms, relax, come back to your regular breath and when you're ready, blink your eyes open. So you can use this technique 
to take your energy and transmute it into your manifestation work. For example, in water manifestation, where you take a bottle of water or a glass of water, hold it in between your palms, and then you charge the water with your intention before drinking it. You can add this exercise during this practice to supercharge that water with your energy, to really make sure that that water is being charged. You'll do this while you're holding the water, again, bringing the energy first into your solar plexus, drawing it up towards the heart, then out through your arms, and then focusing the energy out through your palms and your fingertips and into the water. You can try it while you're scripting, while you write, do your best to keep that flow of energy from your solar plexus and out through your fingertips into the pen and then onto the words that you write onto the page. And similar to the water manifestation technique, if you have your, your script already written, you can focus your energy through your palms and then also maybe focus that energy up through your throat chakra as you read your script out loud. Read it with conviction. You can also do a similar technique to send your intention out into the universe, where instead of pushing the energy out through your arms, through your palms, through your fingertips, you focus the energy upwards and outwards through your third eye. However, if you plan to do this this way, it's always important to call your energy back through the third eye and then reground your energy back into your solar plexus. And then I recommend taking your palms and your forehead all the way down, touch the earth to ground your energy off. Now, if you need the help of the earth or universal consciousness into your work, you can use your breath to draw energy from these greater sources. This is especially useful if you feel like you don't have enough energy in your own reserves, or if you need big energy, energy that's a lot greater than yourself. And that's because I want to remind you that this type of work uses energy, so it can deplete you. When manifesting, sending out your intentions, doing spiritual work in general, it's extremely important to replenish yourself especially if this isn't something that you've put into your practice before. And you can use these types of breath practices to replenish yourself by asking for assistance from the earth or universal energy to help fill yourself back up. The first two techniques are rather simple. First, have your feet firmly planted on the ground, either standing or seated in a chair, or you can sit in Sukhasana, easy pose, or Padmasana, Lotus. Wherever your body comes into contact with the ground, you will either inhale up through your feet or through the base of your spine. Inhale, you'll draw that energy up into your body and then through the central channel or your spine, all the way up to the crown of your head. Then as you exhale, draw the energy back down to your solar plexus. Continue this pattern for a couple more breaths. Inhaling, drawing earth energy up and into your own body, moving up your spine and to the crown of your head. Hold for a moment, then exhale, draw the energy back down and keep it here at your solar plexus. Next, we'll work on connecting with universal energy. This time, inhale from the crown of your head. Draw that energy downwards all the way through your body to your feet. Exhale, draw the energy back up into the solar plexus and keep going inhale draw the universal energy down into your body through the crown of your head move the energy down your spine all the way to your feet fill yourself up maybe pause for a moment exhale move the energy back up into your solar plexus your energy center now for a challenge as you inhale, you'll simultaneously inhale, drawing the energy up from the earth and draw the energy down from the universe. Earth energy will rise up all the way to your crown. Universal energy will draw down all the way to your feet. Exhale, notice the energy pulsate through your body or 
Let those energies come and meet together at the solar plexus. Try to continue this pattern, holding your focus. This technique does require a lot of concentration and requires your connection to these greater energies. Take a deep inhale breath and exhale. Inhale, hold for a moment and exhale, relax the breath. And here, if you need to, bring your forehead and your palms back down to the ground, touching the floor, touching the earth to ground off this energy. So this is how you can charge your body with earth energy and universal energy, and both at the same time if you really need it. You can do this type of breath before doing any sort of manifestation work, such as right before putting your manifestation into action to ensure that you are energized and ready. Similarly, you can do this type of breath work first to energize yourself and then focus the energy at your solar plexus, like we did in the first exercise, and then push the energy out through your arms or your third eye, depending on what you wanna do for more bang and for more impact. And as a reminder, you can use that technique, come back to it to replenish yourself after using your energy. To manifest and take action, we need energy. So it's always important to fill your cup and after your work, I highly recommend that you do bring your palms and your forehead down to the ground, not only to ground your energy and come back here into physical reality, but also grounding your manifestation into physical reality. So let me know if you try this out before any of your manifestation techniques or rituals, and how did it go? If you want to get an idea of what type of manifestation techniques would work out for you, be sure to check out this video. And if this was helpful to you, I would love if you would subscribe and join our growing community. Let's manifest and grow together spiritually.